Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Armourer's Bench. Last summer I was lucky enough to visit the Fortaleza Isabel II, a large 19th century fort that defends the entrance to the port of Mahon in Menorca. The fort itself is vast, covering about a square kilometre. In today's episode we're going to take a look at one of the fort's most interesting features, a pair of huge 15 inch coastal guns. Construction of the fort began in 1850, but building and improvements continued throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries. Originally, the fort was designed to mount 160 artillery pieces, including Krupp guns and howitzers, in batteries dotted around the fort. But by the early 1900s, most of these had become obsolete. With the revolution in naval architecture ushered in by advances in ship design, armour and new heavy guns, the Spanish government realised they needed to improve the fort's firepower. To do this, Spain purchased 18 15 inch naval guns from the British Vickers Company in 1929. The 15 inch or 381mm guns had originally been designed for the Brazilian dreadnought Riachuelo. Six of the guns were eventually sent to Menorca. The first arrived in 1932. The guns were so large they had to be transported up from the docks at Mahon by a special segmented railway in a huge logistical operation. Here we can see a contemporary photograph of one of the gun's barrels at the docks at Mahon before it was transported up to the fort. While visiting the fort I had the chance to film some of the battery. From this footage you can get some idea of the scale of the guns. Here we can see the massive concrete base that the gun's turret sits on. The steel turntable, now sadly rusting, that the gun is mounted in gives the weapon a theoretical 300 degree firing arc. A ladder allows access to the roof of the turret, and here we can see the gun's barrel and the sea approach to Mahon that it commands. The barrel is just under 18 metres or 59 feet long. The 15 inch guns had an impressive maximum range of 35 kilometers or 22 miles. However, the guns in place at Lamola lacked the range finding equipment needed for firing at maximum range. Here we can see the riveted armored housing which protected the gun's crew. While this wouldn't have survived a direct hit, it would have protected the crew from shrapnel. As we move to the rear, we can see more of the riveted platform that the gun sits on. What we can see on the surface is just the tip of the installation. At the rear of the turret, we can see a hatch which would have been open when the gun was in action. In this diagram we can see the gun's magazine and shell store, the mechanism for the turret traverse and the motor that powered it. We can also see the ammunition hoist, which was used to bring up cordite charges, and projectiles from the magazine. While the installation below the gun was closed to the public, we can see the surface ventilation ports for the magazine. Sadly, the turret wasn't open to view, but this photo shows the interior, including the breech of the gun, some of the gun's controls, and the loading tray. Here we can see the rear of the turret with hatches to reach the barbette below. A crane on the surface was used to pull shells and cordite propellant up from below through the very substantial sliding hatch that we can see here. And here again we can see the hoist and to the right it's manually operated crank. This panoramic shot filmed from an old semaphore tower shows the batteries, barracks, offices and stores built into an old quarry. In the distance is the fort's old telegraph tower and the massive 19th century barrack buildings. In the distance it's just possible to make out the supporting 6 inch gun batteries. And finally, the two 15 inch turrets. In this photo, we can see part of the battery of four smaller 6 inch Vickers guns, which supported the 15 inch battery. In 
In this final section of footage, it's easy to get an idea of the gun's massive size. It could throw an 860 kilogram or 1895 pound shell up to 22 miles, and with a good crew could manage two rounds per minute. The turret traverses on a ring of rollers that are housed in the barbette below. This theoretically allows the turret to traverse 300 degrees. As we continue around the front of the turret, we can see a small port near what would have been the gun aimer's position. The guns were excellently positioned to command the approaches to the port of Mahon. Today, the views from the battery are stunning. Over to the right of the first gun's position is the second 15-inch gun. The last of Spain's 15-inch guns were finally retired in the mid-2000s. Fortaleza Isabel II never saw action, and its massive 15-inch guns never fired a shot in anger. The fort and the peninsula it's built on are beautiful, and well worth a visit. Thank you very much for watching guys, if you enjoyed this episode don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video around, and also don't forget you can check out our full accompanying blog on Lamola's 15 inch guns over on our website, thearmorersbench.com. Thanks for watching.